Hi and welcome back. If you saw my last video, you know I was uh, in the process of selling my Solar capacitor tester. I did the comparison between it and the two Heath kits and linked my eBay uh, sales thing to the uh, video. And within six hours of putting it on eBay, it was gone. It just disappeared. So that's sold. And as sure as there's ticks in New Hampshire in the springtime, a friend of mine calls me up this morning and says, Do you have any 250 microfarad, 300 volt capacitors? <laughs> well, I sure do. I have a bunch of capacitors in my junk box. And this one here actually is a 250 plus 20 plus 20 at 350 working volts. But it's probably been in my junk box for some 30 odd years just sitting there doing nothing and it's not wise to take these capacitors and connect them to the full working voltage right away when the capacitor has been sitting that long the electrolyte is usually settled out and you want to reform these things before you even try to put high voltage on them my solar capacitor tester which is now gone did that very easily uh, you just cranked up the voltage and it had a built-in milliamp meter now I could have gone to the problems or the trouble of taking my old triplet over here and hooking that up in series with my high voltage power supply up there and running test leads and test clips each and every place all over the table. But I decided that since the solar was gone, I was going to put something like this together. And this is just a BNC in for the DC, a BNC out for the capacitor, and a 5 milliampere motor, uh, motor, yeah, meter movement. And I put a homemade shunt across there so that it'll handle 50 milliampere's as well because you don't want to start out on 5 milliamps in case the capacitor is shorted right from the get-go. And again, I could have used just the standard triplet, but this makes it nice and neat and easy. So I'm back in business here, and we'll take a quick peek at what's inside. As stated, this. this thing couldn't be more dead simple. We've got power in through the milliamp meter and back out to the capacitor. And when we want the 50 milliamp here scale, we switch switch in this shunt, this homemade shunt, and this is nothing but a length of iron wire that I had laying around that works out to about one ohm per foot, and I needed a 0.6 ohm shunt resistor to make this meter work at 50 milliampere to, to do a times 10 on the scale. We won't bother going into the math. There's a hundred websites out there that show you how to figure out the resistance of your meter and no you can't do it with an ohm meter. You have to do it with a couple of resistors and measuring the current through it. You can work out the resistance of the meter. From that you can work out the resistance needed to make your times 10 shunt. It's dead simple. There's a hundred people have done it. We won't bother. Just wanted to show you how stupid simple this was inside. So what do we do with this thing? Well, we hook up a BNC cable to the DC in. And up here on our Heathkit high voltage supply, we have a BNC adapter over here. We plug that in. I'm going to turn the voltage all the way down to start with. Then we come back down here. And I've got a BNC cable that plugs in on the capacitor side. Got a couple of clips on the end of it. Whoop, wrong capacitor. Now this one, that's minus and 250, volt, uh, 250 microfarads there, so I'm going to clip this here. We start on the 50 milliamp here scale, just in case everything goes to hell. Clip this on here, and I'm going to start slowly turning the voltage up. Let's try to get this in the shot. Start bringing the voltage up and see what happens. You can see the current starts to rise and it's falling off pretty quickly. So this looks like a fairly decent cap. I'm going to flip over here on the 5 milliamp here scale and slowly start working this thing up. And you can see the pot's a little noisy up there, so I'm going to kick this back down. But it looks like we're staying down in the one milliamp here range. There's a hundred, there's a hundred and fifty, and it's dropping off pretty quick. It looks like this cap's in fairly good shape. 
There's 200. It's starting to fall a little bit slower now at 250 and it's sitting right around 5 milliamperes. And you can see it's falling off. So the capacitor is doing all right. The current in it is fairly low. You want to keep it down to a couple of milliamperes during this process so you don't stress the capacitor. So I'm going to let that sit right at that level for a few minutes. And now well, it's falling off. Let's go back up here. I'm going to bring it up to 300 volts. And again, it's falling off. No, nope, it's jittering around a little bit. Nope, settle down. We're under 5 milliamps. I'm going to let that sit. And okay, I'll our cap has been reforming for about an hour. And I've been keeping an eye on it, occasionally sneaking the voltage up and keeping it around 1 milliamp year or less, not to stress the cap. And now that we're up to the working voltage of 350, we're down to about 100 microamperes. So I think this capacitor is going to be okay for his little science project he's going to build. The last step is going to be disconnect the cap and thoroughly discharge it. And then I'll use my ESR meter to uh, see how good the cap really is. Okay, so we've discharged the cap and we've let it sit here for a couple of minutes with a shorting bar or shorting jumper on it. And the reason I've done that is you'll find these capacitors if you discharge them with a resistor or even a screwdriver. And you come back a couple minutes later, you'll get another spark out of them. You come back a few minutes after that, you'll get another spark out of them. It's a known effect with big electrolytics that they will rebuild some of the charge. And that's why you see these great big oil filled high voltage capacitors. Uh, they always have a shorting wire across them. Because if they've been charged and you're, they're disconnected, they can build up a good portion of that charge again. It won't have as big a current hit. But uh, they can build up to many thousands of volts in some of those big capacitors. So you discharge them for a period of time to make sure it's down. And I'll turn on my little Chinese ESR meter here. Got this guy off eBay and it works extremely well. You can test the equivalent series resistors, uh, resistance of a capacitor in circuit with this because it uses an extremely low voltage that won't turn on uh, the transistors and diodes in the circuit. And it's zeroed, so I'm going to disconnect my short. And I'm expecting about less than a tenth of an ohm. There should be less than a tenth of an ohm here for this size capacitor if it's any good. And it's very good. That's 0 .06. Now a brand new modern capacitor. Uh, can you see that in the... It's 0 .06 ohms. A brand new modern capacitor might get down to 0 .04 or 0 .03 ohms. But for something this age that's been sitting in the junk box forever, that's a pretty decent cap. So, now that we've reformed the electrolytic capacitor, We'll hand this off to my buddy for his science project. Maybe I had to charge it up and hand it off. No, I won't do that. And he'll be able to build his project, and he'll be a happy camper. So I'm going to give him a call. And for now, that's it. We'll see you again. Bye. Okay, okay, okay. I heard all of you out there yelling and hollering at me. Why didn't you put a discharge function on it? So I did. Now we have operate and discharge so I won't have to disconnect the capacitor to discharge it all I have to do is flip the switch that uh, is a double pole double throw two amp switch with both contacts or both poles paralleled so that it's four amps worth going through a 5000 ohm resistor and since my power supply will only produce about 400 volts that's about 80 milliampers that ought to handle that with ease so, there you have it. Now we have an operate discharge switch as well as the current switch. That's it. This is really the end this time. Take care. Bye.